You know, there's a lot of talk about the lost books of the Bible. There's even books titled The Lost Books of the Bible. And there's a lot of discussion because people want to cast dispersions on the scripture. They want to talk down about the scripture. And frankly, in my experience, people are looking for an excuse to ignore reading the Bible. And one of the excuses they'll use is, well, you know, there were a lot of books written that didn't make it into the Bible. Well, let's, let's discuss this, can we? Let's talk about the lost books of the Bible. First of all, let's establish our baseline. And here's our baseline, 2 Timothy 3.16, which says, all scripture is God-breathed. All scripture is God-breathed. What makes an ordinary book, like say I would write, different from the, the Bible? And the answer is that God is the author of the Bible. And over about 1,500 years, he used about 40 different men to whom he gave the word of God by inspiration. And so here's the scripture, and it says, all scripture is God-breathed. And beyond that, it's useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Once we understand that all scripture is God-breathed, then we have to ask ourselves the question, how valuable is it? <laughs> it's pretty valuable, isn't it? It comes from God. Then if there's a lost book out there somewhere, how valuable would that book be? Well, it would be incredibly valuable. The lost books of the Bible would be, they'd be, they'd be valuable beyond measure. They'd be, they'd be priceless, frankly. And yet, what happens when people talk about the lost books of the Bible? Do they say, I think I've got a lead on some of the lost books of the Bible and I've been studying them like crazy. No, they tend to go, oh, you know, there's some books that weren't included in the Bible, so I'm throwing the whole thing out. That just doesn't make any sense. Let's talk about, for example, a pirate's map. Let's say instead of the Bible, let's say we had a pirate's map with a, a, a lead to gold and jewels and diamonds. I would assert that the rewards in the future are better than that. But let's say we just had a, a pirate's map but, you know, we got a bit of a problem, and a bit of the problem is that part of the map is missing. And <laughs> in fact, there's a lot of pirate stories that like this, you know, where there's the map, and somebody finds the map, and then there's a little piece missing. Well, when there's a piece of the map missing, what happens? Do the pirates say, oh, well, then the treasure must not exist? And they, or the, the whole map is worthless, and they just wad it up and throw it out? No, what they do is, they take the pieces of the map that they do have and they study them and they work them and they try to infer because it's like there's treasure in here and, and we can figure this out. If there really were lost books of the Bible, the people that were propounding that, if they really thought the Bible was God's word, first of all, it would drive them to study the word that we do have even more. The people that thought there were some books missing would perhaps study the word of God even harder than those who thought they weren't, they weren't missing, just the same thing that happens with the pirate maps. But in reality, like I've said, the people that I've talked to that have mentioned the lost books of the Bible, basically what it amounts to is they just use that as an excuse so they can ignore the whole word of God. But the word of God is in front of us, ladies and gentlemen, and it's not something to be ignored. This is information from God. How did we get this word of God, that some people could say there are missing books. How did that happen anyway? As I said, over a period of about 1,500 years, in 40 different writers, or through about 40 different writers, God spoke to people like he spoke to Moses, like he spoke to Samuel, like he spoke to David, like he spoke to Hezekiah, like he spoke to Isaiah, Jeremiah. He would speak to these writers, and they would write. Now, the, what we call a book um, that scholars called a codex, um, which is you have an attachment of spine in the back and all the pages together. That didn't exist until about 100 AD. And before 100 AD, what you had were individual scrolls, just many, many individual scrolls. And that's the thesis upon which there's some missing books because the idea is, well, who really kept track of all the scrolls anyway? And couldn't some scrolls have been written and then simply not been paid attention to? That's kind of the thesis. 
And the answer is, the men and women, the godly men and women of biblical times were just as concerned about truth as godly men and women are today. And they worked hard to organize what was the Word of God from what wasn't the Word of God. If you go back to the book of Ecclesiastes, now this is 950 years before Christ. This is almost 3,000 years ago. Here's what Ecclesiastes chapter 12 has to say in Uh, In verse 12, it says, Be warned, my son, of anything in addition to them, of making many books, there is no end. So already by 3,000 years ago, there were so many books that Ecclesiastes says that of making many books, there's no end. It's like today (laughs) in our libraries. There's book after book after book. But the godly men and women paid really close attention to which books came from the men who claimed to be writing for God. And they took those books and they examined those books and they verified those books and then they kept them together. Look at the Apostle Paul. When he's close to dying, when Paul is close to dying in 2 Timothy, look what he writes here in uh, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, starting in verse 13. He says, When you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas, and my scrolls, and especially the parchments. So here's the Apostle Paul at the very end of his life. And what's he interested in? His scrolls and his parchments. Those things that contain the Word of God. And what would he do with them? He could, he could pass them down and say, these things are the Word of God. And then we get the last books of the Bible. Well, what happened? Well, Different people saying, well, I think I can write some of the Word of God, and they'd write stuff down. But then the men of that generation who knew those people would say, you didn't write for God, and they wouldn't include those scrolls. Oh, 2,000 years later, it's real easy to say, oh, we should have included those scrolls. But the men of that generation who knew those authors, they didn't trust those men, and they didn't include them. And then we've got one more thing, and that is we've got to actually read the documents. So what do we do? We take something like New Testament Apocrypha and we say, we're going to read. Let's let's take some of these lost books of the Bible and let's read from them and just see what they say. Like here's Jesus Christ when he's a little kid. He's standing there and he, what he'd done is he'd gone down to a river and he'd piled up some water, kind of like a Moses trick in reverse. And And another child comes by and kind of scatters it with a stick. When Jesus saw what he had done, he was enraged and said to him, You insolent, godless dunderhead, what harm did the pools in the water do to you? See, now you also shall wither like a tree and shall bear neither leaves nor root or fruit. And immediately that lad withered up completely. He died. Little child comes along and scatters Jesus' water, so he kills him. Oh, that's godly. That fits with the rest of the Word of God. That absolutely should be in here. (laughs) Okay, look. Before we can talk about the lost books of the Bible, you've got to read what they're about. You know, here's a a book called The Lost Books of the Bible. And you read in it, in the Gospel of Nicodemus, and Jesus Christ is walking into Pilate and the guards that are standing by are holding poles with the Roman ensign on top. And the Roman ensigns bow by themselves to Jesus Christ. You know, it, it, lost books of the Bible? No. There, there's a lot of scrolls, like Ecclesiastes said. There are many things that were written that as people read them and examined them and wanted to find the truth. The people who compiled the scrolls of the Bible wanted the truth. They wanted the Word of God. They didn't want to leave the Word of God out, but they weren't stupid enough to believe that everything that was written on the planet should be in, even if somebody called it the second book of Acts or the Gospel of Nicodemus. You know, and so these, these wonderful men and women of God studying the books and reading them over and over and over again very, very diligently came, uh, came to where they had collected and compiled and put together the canon and now what you and I enjoy as the Word of God. Don't be deceived by the idea that there's lost books of the Bible and let that discourage you. Keep reading the Word of God and live by it. 
it'll pay you wonderful dividends.